We are nearing the end of the one chart at a time video series. Thanks so much for coming back for just a few more videos. In this section of the series, we're gonna talk about visualizing qualitative data. Now, many people, when they think about data visualization, they probably start thinking about bar charts and line charts and pie charts. But qualitative data and qualitative researchers and qualitative analysts have a lot of information at their disposal and there are ways to visualize those data. And perhaps the basic or the standard way that many people think about visualizing qualitative data is to create the word cloud. And there are lots of perceptual problems with the word cloud, lots of accuracy issues with the word cloud. And there are some ways that I think we can make the word cloud even better. So in today's video from Marty Hurst at University of California, Berkeley, she is going to talk about how you can improve the word cloud. So I'm going to hand it over to Marty so you can learn more about this way of visualizing qualitative data. Hi, my name's Marty Hurst, and I'm happy to be appearing on this visualization series. So let me share my screen. So have you ever thought about how you might visualize a written document? It's not easy to do. Let's take as an example, a State of the Union address. For example, Barack Obama's final State of the Union address. There's a lot of text here. Here's one page, another, there's a lot of text. If you wanted to summarize this, you could write a very short summary, but what if you wanted to make this visible? What if you wanted to visualize it? How might you do that? Well, news organizations have come up with some good ideas. For example, you could choose a theme such as jobs and you could show how often different words are talked about over the years. These are, this is a visualization of State of the Union addresses across different presidencies with a color indicating what party the president was from and how often they talked about these different concepts uh, with many different words associated with those concepts. So jobs, invest, deficit, small business. And this way you can compare the frequency of discussion of different topics across different presidents. This is a more visual way of doing a similar thing where we have the pictures of the presidents who spoke and of course they give a State of the Union address every year of their presidency, so they appear multiple times. You could see how many times they say the word America, which seems to be the most uh, popular word to say uh, in a State of the Union address, and then how often they talked about different topics and you can compare them with this visualization. But uh, some news organizations instead use a visualization called a word cloud. And what a word cloud is, is a visualization where you do some processing of the text, count how often every word occurs in the text, throw out the really common words like the and and, and then arrange the remaining top 150 words in an engaging way that can look something like this. Where in this case, um, it's important to note that color doesn't mean anything. It's uh, assigned to be aesthetically pleasing. And it's very cute because the words have been placed across a figure representing the shape of the United States of America, if we only, the continental part only. And we could see America is really big uh, and American as well, and some other words. Here's another version done by another news organization, uh, just in black and white. Something to note though, is that the commentary that goes alongside this word cloud doesn't actually talk about the words in the word cloud. So. The journalist wrote, Obama defended the progress made over the last seven years and set out an agenda that will likely remain unfinished long after his presidency ends, turning back the effects of climate change, launching a moonshot to cure cancer and a grassroots movement to demand changes in the political system. And I highlighted the words in yellow because they actually do not appear in the word cloud. So the key points the reporter wanted to make actually are not visible in the word cloud, which has just very generic terms that are, that are not linked together in a narrative that can be made sense of. So the purported benefits of word clouds by those who, who uh, advocate for them are that they can give you the gist of a document or a summary, or they allow comparing values or help you navigate a document collection. They're also engaging. And except with the exception of engaging, uh, research shows that actually none of these others uses are really accurate. None of them, they're not, word clouds are really not good for getting gists and summaries. They're not good for comparing values or navigating documents, but they are engaging. So 
I think the reason that they're used is that they're really easy to make automatically. You could just put some text into an online tool and you get a word cloud out. And that's what these news organizations have been doing. They're visually engaging. They're really, they catch your attention and they're commonly used by other people. So because they're popular, they're popular. It's one of those things. But for scientific expression, uh, they're shown to be misleading and you know, generally misleading visualizations are, are not uh, what we uh, want to advocate for. Uh, I did show alternatives that can be used, but they are not, don't have those properties of being really easy to create. So because word clouds are so popular, what we decided to do was look at an alternative that keeps their engaging nature that shows the words, uh, but maybe makes them a little bit uh, better for at least getting the gist of a document. So we developed a tool we called Word Zones, which organize the words both semantically and visually to improve understanding of the gist of the document while retaining the engaging nature of word clouds. So it's a very simple idea. You organize the words according to common concepts. You, you give them a color uh, within those concepts, and then you put blank space in between the groups and it can make it much easier to get the gist. So, so for that State of the Union address, there's a lot of discussion of America and the country. But now we can see this little research uh, subtopic here about trying to cure cancer and work that they did on malaria. We can see a little climate change and, and energy uh, subtopic, something about leadership and politics, a lot of words about the future and change. They could be grouped together. Some international relations and uh, anti-terrorism conversation that happened in that uh, speech, as well as a lot of things about economics. Here's another example where we go from a standard word cloud layout to this alternative. And I think you will agree that this is probably a bit more understandable and our extensive studies verified that people prefer this sort of view. So, uh, so that's a little, uh, summary of word clouds, what they are supposed to be for, a slightly better alternative, and a bit of an ad for also considering more standard visualizations if you care about accuracy. Thank you for your attention. And thanks, Marty, for that great review of the word cloud and your process to break up the text that you might use in your word cloud into different groups so that the word cloud becomes more useful. Again, I think there are lots of different ways to visualize qualitative data. And as you're going to see over the next couple of days, we're going to explore some of those different visualization types. And of course, if you check out my new book, Better Data Visualizations, you'll see even more graphs in this particular category. So come back tomorrow and we're going to learn more ways to visualize our qualitative data.